Bikers of Assam Touring Club Maha Road Trip 2 International The Tour of Thunder Dragon Bhutan The longest road trip of the year organized by Bikers of Assam Touring Club is called Maha Road Trip Initially, Bhutan was the destination of our first Maha Road Trip in 2013, suggested by our member Jantra Barpatra Gohai, but we changed the plan and decided to visit the important cultural and historical places of Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. We visited Sipsagar, Kajironga, Tejpur, Itanagar, Zero, and Mazuli last year. Our last year's Maha Road Trip 2013 was very successful and appreciated by all. We promised that we will visit Bhutan next time. So the destination of Maha Road Trip 2 International was fixed more than a year ago. Hello, ready? Ready, ready, go! Finally, Madhurjo Pratim Rajkor, myself, Jayanta Barpatra Gohai, Om Prakash Gogoi, Vijay Borua, Abhijit Nirmalya, Mrenmoy Sarkar and Arnav Deka confirmed their participation. As we had jobs in our office on 1st October, so we decided to start our journey after 1 pm. After my lunch, my friend Vijay Borua from Dikboi reached my home to pick me up in his Bajaj Pulsar 180. My mom wished us luck and we started our journey. Hey, back, back, back. The main reason of not visiting Bhutan last year were Firstly, we didn't know how to acquire entry permits of Bhutan and secondly, we didn't have much idea about the entry routes, direction and places of attraction of Bhutan. The entry permits and route issues were solved by discussing the matter with some passionate travelers in various websites and forums. Everyone is encouraged and motivated us to visit Bhutan. We decided to start our Maha Road Trip 2 International on 1st October 2014 when we posted about our Maharo trip 2 in our Facebook page. Chakrita mi pege chi bela shotti Ar matro ko ekta mas be Starting a your right haro so debe tin mas pore kan fam Chup kori kenu bela ki chu bol chuna Eta ki two four four one one three nine Dinma de ke bala ke akti ba Mitar jatche bere public telephone Jururi khub jururi darka We started our journey from Duliajan at 2.30 pm On the way we met the Vijit with his Bajaz Avenger 220, Minmoy his pillion or not with his Royal Enfield Bullet Classic 350, Janta and Ohm in Bajaz Pulsar 200 NS. 
We reached their gown at 9 pm and received a warm welcome at Vijay's sister in law's home. They served us tea, sweets, and special pujia made at their stalls. We had a dinner in a restaurant and reached resort in Kaziranga at 1 am. 2nd October 2014. We started our journey from Kajironga at 8 am and we had breakfast at Adhava in Chokola Bondha and reached Tezpur where Om met his girlfriend. We had a lunch at a new restaurant named Orchid in Mawagui, Assam. Sir, I'm not sure what you're saying. 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 I'm not After the heavy lunch and the meat, the sun made our tired body feel sleepy. Moroma, BTAD at about 5 pm where we spent a lovely evening by the sides of the road in front of St. John's School. I'm going to go to the i
We reached Bangai Gaon at 8 p.m. The town was in festive mood of Durga Puja. We stayed in Hotel Diamond above the TVS Villa. Third October 2014, day three. Sir, We started our journey at 6:30 a.m. from Bongaigao. The road was wide, and we maintained a good speed. We crossed the Assam border at Sri Rampur Gate and reached Alipur Bypass of West Bengal at 10.30 am where we had our breakfast come lunch. We reached the border town. The Indian side is called Ziagao and the Bhutan side is known as Quen Soli. We came to know that our royal anthem is facing starting from As it was Durga Puja, half of Ziagao was closed. Two of our members went in search of a mechanic to repair our royal anthem and we want to inquire about our entry permits of Bhutan in the immigration office of Quen Soli. Our members repaired a bullet and reached back after 5.30 p.m. We filled our forms and deposited it in the immigration office. The documents required our Indian voter ID card, a passport and passport size photos. After a long wait in the queue, they took a fingerprint and photos in the computer. <laughs> As the transport office is already closed for the vehicle permits, we decided to halt in Hotel Anand in Siaka, few meters away from 12th Solling Gate. As I was very tired, so slept early. 4th October 2014, day 4. We woke up late as the transport office will open after 10 am PST. We decided to skip the breakfast and arrange the vehicle permits first. We went to the RTSA office when Soling and applied for motorcycle road permits. 
documents required with Xerox copies of entry permits of Bhutan, vehicle registration card, driving license and an application in plain paper. We paid fees of rupees 75 per motorcycle in RTSA. At the RTSA office, we made a tour organizer who advised us to change our currency and take a local mobile SIM. After receiving the permits, he took us to a shopkeeper where we exchanged the currency. We also took two local pre-activated Bhutanese mobile SIM cards as we have not activated international roaming in our Indian mobiles. After having a delicious lunch, we started our journey. We were enjoying the curvy hills roads of Bhutan. After riding a few kilometers, we were stopped at the first checkpoint. We showed our immigration entry permit and vehicle pass. The officer asked our motorcycle numbers, which we said one by one. Suddenly he said one motorcycle doesn't match. You can't go further. We were in a state of shock. We tried to convince him it's not our fault. He said go back to RTSA and correct it. I said it's already 2.30 p.m. BST and the office will be closed, even tried to keep bribe but nothing worked. Since there was no other option, I returned back to RTSC with BJ, leaving others at the check gate. But as expected the office was closed. I was very angry and frustrated as it was not a fault. Moreover. We had the habit of giving bribe and get easy solutions in India, but it isn't working in Bhutan. There was a girl from Sikkim who was also waiting. She told she came with her family and looking for permits. Soon few more people came looking for permits. We contacted a cop and asked for help. He called the RTSA officer and told about our problems. After a few minutes, the officer came and corrected the motorcycle number. We reached back to the gate at 4 p.m. and continued our journey. The views were very beautiful and we forgot all the anger and frustration. The curbs were very sharp. Out of joy and fear, we used to scream in some turns.
After riding for an hour, we were surrounded by dense fog. We can't even see few meters. It seemed it was impossible to reach Paro before midnight. We decided to buy something to eat and drink on the way. After riding 40 kilometers, we reached a small town-like area. We entered a restaurant where we came to know that there is a guest house nearby. I went in search of the guest house and the others went for shopping. The manager was a girl named Pinky who showed us the rooms. The rooms were large, clean and equipped with heater and kitchen. Moreover, rates were cheap. I immediately booked the rooms and walked to the restaurant. <laughs> We had a delicious meal and walked back to the guest house. After a few minutes, a young man came to our room and introduced himself. He was from Himachal. He was returning back to Fuensoling with his two friends and one of his and Phil ran out of petrol. We somehow drove some petrol in a bottle from our and Phil and asked him to return to the guest house. We will arrange something in the morning. उसके वो बाइक्स में आया ना इसलिए मैंने हमारा बाइक देख के मतलब वो बाइक है क्या वो हेल्प मांग रहा था बट वे ये आपका गेस्ट हाउस है ना कॉलेज गेस्ट हाउस गवर्नमेंट Taklumin. Uh, taklumin. Yes, please. 
Bisa bing. Bisa bing. Fifth October 2014, day five. We woke up early in the morning and got ready. We gave two liters of petrol to the Himachal bikers and clicked some crew photos. The waiter was pleasant and I wanted to start the journey as early as possible. But everyone was busy in their own way pausing and clicking photos. With an angry face I reached the restaurant for breakfast. I ordered for local pork to pop, but it was not yummy. Even at the restaurant the other members were acting lazy. With an angry mood I asked Arnab to stir the bullet and started our journey leaving address behind. After few minutes we reached Gidu College of Business Studies. A beautiful wall painting, the prayer flags, prayer wheels and the sound of bell changed my mind, made me feel cool and relaxed. We waited for the other members and continued our journey. We were enjoying the looping roads and maintaining good speed. We were riding above the clouds and the roads were very narrow. We had our lunch in a beautiful restaurant where the owner was very friendly and we talked about many things like motorcycling and Bhutan. <laughs> After riding for half an hour, we stopped at the second check gate where we showed our permits. After riding for another half an hour, we saw a diversion where one road leads to Paro while other goes to Timpo. It was about 4.30 pm. We took the road to Paro.
before reaching Paro airport, it started raining. It was getting dark and we searched for hotel rooms but it seems that all the hotels were full. We had last night some visitors slept in cars and rent tents. We tried our trump card. We contacted the number given by the tour organizer whom we met in RTSA. Finally we got rooms in Hotel Brothers. The hotel was an old one and expensive compared to the service. But thankfully we don't have to sleep outside in the cold and rainy weather. We went to the hotel, had our dinner and sleep with a hope to break Tiger's Nest Monastery next day. Sixth of October 2014, day six. When I opened my eyes in the morning, it was still dark, but everyone was excited and getting ready for the tiger's nest tracking. We quickly got dressed up and dressed up. We could see some snow clipped mountain tops outside the window. The locals said that we couldn't ride there, but can do trekking. Tracking to that unknown snow clip mountain was out of picture. Even I doubt that we could reach the Paru Patsang. The popular name of that Patsang Palto Monastery is Tiger Snake. A prominent Himalayan Buddhist sacred site and temple complex is located in the cliff site of the upper Paro Valley in Bhutan. The temple complex was first built in 1692 around the Takcheng Seng Santu Cave where Guru Padmasam Bhava is said to have meditated in the 8th century. Padmasam Bhava is credited with introducing Buddhism to Bhutan. Today, Paro Taksing is best known of the 13 Taksing or Tiger Lair caves in which he meditated. The monastery is located 10 kilometers to the north of Paro and hangs on a precipitous cliff at 10,240 feet, about 3,000 feet above the Paro Valley. We started our journey to Baro Tatsang at 6.30 am. We left our bags and protective gears except the helmets in the room.
On the way, we had a breakfast and reached the parking place at 9 a.m. where there were few stalls. The shopkeeper lady asked to buy something and she will give discount as I was her first customer. I liked some traditional ornaments for my sister and girlfriend, but when the lady told they were made from yak bones, I gave up the idea. I bought a metal door knocker with elephant head design. There were some horses which we could hire instead of working at the cost of rupees 1000 per person. This one door, door bell. Knock like this. How much price? Six fifty. Five खाने के लिए पानी के लिए पानी ले गए पानी के लिए ना पड़ेगा नहीं घुड़ाई को यार मेरा माँ माँ कहाँ है बस और है तो बेहद ही no. Calling well done. Lucky with that down. Up at Kumar. So, so now my temp have lost. Damn, eh, it's getting lagging. Eh, but. I'm not bad. Don't you call me too? Hmm? Who's all laughing at me? Buddha is lying. Hmm? Buddha is lying. I'm not going to get along with him. He was our head alone. How much is it? Last one, 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 you go down up here, 800, and more discount, you need discount, 500, 500, lost, you go down, 800, 600, 650, 50 discount, 600, down my more expensive there, 800, this big size, small size is 350, big size. ये कॉपी बोलते दीदी सो ये घुआ से नहीं तो घुआ टेंग 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 तो घुआ पे है तो हम घुआ
Oh, oh, boy, boy, boy. Wow. So you are coming to see. <laughs> 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 As most of the persons are walking, we decided to walk. With the heavy metal door knocker in my pocket and the helmet in our hands, we started to climb to Tatsang. The first part of the trek goes through jungle. After climbing for 5 minutes, we clearly understood it's not an easy walk. The approach trek to the monastery is dangerous and slippery. After walking 45 minutes, we reached a fence where we decided to take a rest. We clicked some photos and continued to walk. <laughs> we reached a cafeteria, the prices were really high. Hey, <laughs> We continue walking and reach the 850 steps leading up to the monastery entrance. The chain could be seen clearly. We click some photos and continue to walk the path. Finally, 
পয়সা দিয়া তো যে হ্যাঁ এর ফটো মারিছিলেন যদি হেরি হয়ে যাও অল্প রখি দিবি যদি অল্প ভয় লাগে রখি দিবি মানে পুলো নেচাবি তললে নেচাবি আহি তাক আহিব আহিব কি লাই লাই ভাবে we cross dakin waterfall and reach the cheng at 1:30 pm cameras and mobile phones were not allowed inside the cheng the environment inside the cheng was very quiet and peaceful the aroma scented incense agarbatti filled the cold air of the room is ornated and decked out with images of buddhist deities and fresh offerings of food and money we can hear the occasional chants from monks nearby the spirituality of the monastery is omnipresent i asked a monk and went to the cave where the guru padmasambhava meditated i offered some money and prayed a monk gave some holy water to drink and sweets to eat i was very hungry and it tasted like the tastiest sweet in the world i visited several other temples in the monastery butter lamp room the tiger nest cave We started to return back. On the way, we refilled our water bottles in Dakini Falls. 7th October 2014, day 7. When we woke up in the morning, we didn't want to get up from the bed. We were tired and weak. Slowly everyone got up and we started our journey to the capital of Bhutan, Thimphu. We visited the Buddha Point. This is one of the most happening points in Thimphu. It is locally named Buddha Point, but the actual name is Quensel Fort Trang. It is called the Buddha Point because the largest statue of Buddha in the country sits there. We started our return journey at 4 pm. On the way, we brought some fresh local apples from a roadside market. Ninth October 2014, day 9, last day. We woke up late and got ready and started a journey at 8.30 am. The weather was hot and sunny and our bodies tired and heavy breakfast was making us feel sleepy. While riding, I could feel that my Billy and Arna was asleep. I tried to keep us busy and forget the sleepy mood by talking continuously and drinking water and juices. We reached Noga Bypass. I parked the anthill by the side of the road in a shadow of some trees after crossing the bypass and I decided to take some rest. I don't know when I felt asleep. I heard Arnab saying, bro get up, bro let's go and take 
rest somewhere in a good place. It's not safe here. We took some water and splashed water in our faces and started riding. We reached Wild Ridge Hiko Redo Gadironga, the same resort where we stayed on our first night during Maha Road Trip 2013. We had our lunch, took some rest and started our journey again. After a few hours, we started feeling sleepy again. We reached Boca Cut and stopped for a tea break. Boca Cut is famous for the delicious pera. We had tea with pera and packed some to bring back home. We reached our respective homes at around 9.45 pm. Thus, Biker Sobasam Maharo Trip 2 International is completed.